Well, hello everyone. My name is Mighty Stream. I'm going to do your September the 24th spiritual principle a day in a meditation. Um, the last meditation, I was talking a little bit about uh, how I developed spiritually, began to grow in my understanding of my higher power. And I mentioned that it had a lot to do with the death of my pops. And so I don't know if you've seen me on different platforms, but this is usually what my background looks like. I use that to inspire me and remind me of where I come from. That's a medallion that I got at a convention and it says, let go and let God around my neck. Okay, let's get into the meditation for the day. Let me share that screen with you. I just wanted to follow up and share with you what I use. I use many things, but that background is one of the things I use to keep myself inspired and to remember just how far I have come in my spirituality from not believing uh, that I should pray about certain things because I felt the things I was praying about were consequences to understanding that God is loving and infinite and power and that I could actually, even in my wrong, turn to the God of my understanding because God to me is love. The title of today's meditation is Letting Love In. How fitting is that? It is a loving act to let others love us. Living Clean, Chapter 4, Death, Dying, and Living with Grief. Wow. <laughs> let me just breathe here a second, guys. I didn't expect this meditation, especially after the just for today. Okay. Well, we're going to do this one together. Okay. In a recovery allows us to accept love even when our lives have been shattered by loss. Emotional pain makes this feeling Excuse me, emotional pain makes this feel especially risky. But we take a chance, gather our courage, and lean on our fellow members. In times like these, we grow to appreciate all that recovery has to offer. Too often, pride, low self esteem, and fear of rejection blocks us from reaching out or accepting help from others. Not wanting to be a burden or to appear needy, we isolate and tell ourselves that we can handle this alone. We overestimate our nuisance value and deny others the opportunity to love, support, and serve us. Hope I said that word right. We're embarrassed by our pain. It's inconvenient and uncomfortable to be so vulnerable. We hide behind a cloak of self-sufficiency and independence. Been there. I have been there. Of course, there's no right or wrong way to grieve. It's not unreasonable to want to spend some time alone with our thoughts and our higher power. Intense feelings of loss can make it hard to find a balance between solitude and isolation. We do our best to be honest with ourselves. Letting others love us when we're grieving helps us avoid the trap of old ideals. Accepting love, whether gracefully or begrudgingly, is in itself an act of love. And the consequences often prove astounding. My best friend relapsed 
and die. One member shared, I thought people didn't want to hear about how I felt. But after I shared, I got so much love and support that it truly renewed my faith in N.A. It's why I'm clean today. I will trust the process, feel the pain, and allow others to feel it with me today. I will let others love me, even when I'd rather they didn't. Let's take a moment of silence followed by the wee version of Serenity Prayer. Moment of silence now, please. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change, the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference just for today. Please and thank you. Letting love in. It is a loving act to let others love us. I, I believe that. I believe that this um, meditation is a bit deep. <laughs> it's a bit deeper than I want to go. Um, but I already started. I already started the ball rolling. So there's no no reason to back out now. If some of you were here with me around the 13th of September listening through the 15th, uh, my sister passed away on, I've lost three sisters total, two that I knew. Um, so the, the sister that passed away from an overdose, now she, she overdosed on the 13th, but she was not found until the 15th. And oftentimes I have found myself thinking because her birthday uh, falls in October close to the Halloween uh, celebration. Um, but oftentimes I find myself between, you know, September and October um, just missing how available she was to me. You know, I, and, and she happens to be one of the two people in my family that actually introduced me uh, to recovery. Now, they introduced me to recovery because they were celebrating clean time. And I would come down to their home group and support them as they were getting clean time. And I would go to, back then, the home groups would have softball games against each other. And I would join them for those events. That's That was my initial introduction. But this particular sister is the one that actually took me to my, um, I don't say she took me. I drove and met her at the World Convention in Chicago in 93. And so over the years, our relationship just became centered around getting clean, staying clean, going to conventions, doing meetings together. Um, and I find myself oftentimes missing her. Now, she is what I would say one of the first people during this fentanyl um, pandemic of people dying from overdoses from fentanyl. She's one of the first people that I know uh, that that passed away from that. And I think how far we've come since her passing in 2015. I think how far we have come where now um, drug dealers that are dealing this out are actually facing murder charges. They're facing time um, and how grateful I am for that. But when I think about this meditation, I, I wouldn't say that I was ever a person that wouldn't let others love me, but because of my personality, 
there was already a great deal of belief that I could get through anything by myself if I had to. And so for me to learn that self-sufficiency was a lie, to learn the we of the fellowship instead of the me and the I, it was a process. It was a process. For me to need anyone was not considered a strength to me. Because, you know, my my message was, the, the message that I received through life was that people will let you down. Matter of fact, they'll die on you doing what they want to do and leave you left carrying the bag, trying to figure out how to move their stuff, how to bury them, how to break the news to their fam, children. Um, yeah. And so... It was a process for me. And if you're there, if you have struggled uh, with losing loved ones in recovery and they that loss has been so great that the higher power you picked up um, was a drug and you've given up some clean time dealing with these losses, welcome back, first of all. Welcome back. You never have to use ever again welcome back that sounds like it's off the cuff but it's not because there are a lot of people that have been able to manage to stay clean but it took managing it took doing certain things not going to certain places not hanging out with certain people getting new phone numbers taking people's number out completely even blocking certain phone numbers, just block the number because once the number is blocked, the call can't come back through, right? So sometimes deleting people out, all I need to do is put do not answer for their name and then I block the number. I have hundreds of numbers that I've blocked. Hundreds of numbers that I've blocked because I don't want certain people having access to me. And I go in on social media and I also make sure those very same people don't have access to me because their access to me is triggering. And I don't, I don't want to give up my peace today. But what I have learned is that when I'm struggling, when I am struggling, dealing with grieving, listen, let me tell you something. I found out since I've been in the mental health field, I found out that there's a diagnosis for prolonged grief. Prolonged grief. There's a whole diagnosis for it. There's a whole um, criteria that it has to meet. And when I learned that, I was like, oh, whew. I thought it was my imagination. Like, girl, you need to get past this. But there's a whole diagnosis for people that stay in a state of grieving for a long time. So easy does it. I want you to easy does it. Whoever you are out there, I want you to easy does it. Realize that grief is not, grief is not polite, <laughs> right? Grieving, you know, grief, if I was to personify it, is not a polite neighbor that knocks gently at your door to bring you a platter full of chocolate chip fresh baked cookies <laughs> grief is not polite grief shows up when you least expect it it's triggered by the smell of something the sight of something the feel of something the sound of something and it pops up when you least expect it and that's why it's not worth 
I want to make sure I word this carefully. I'm not saying the person that you lost is not worth whatever, right? I'm saying grief is not worth using over. Grief is not worth using over because it is disruptive and it is not polite. It is going to show up even years after you have stayed clean and gotten your life back on track. It is going to pop up whenever it wants without warning. And if I don't learn how to deal with it without picking up the drug or trying to put something on top of it, if I don't learn that now by practicing these spiritual principles of the program and the things you guys suggest to me to do, if I don't deal with it when it comes up successfully, meaning that I don't have to go get high over it. I don't have to abuse people over it. I don't have to act out over it. Then I will always be at its beck and call. And I just, I don't, I don't have the energy to live like that. I refuse. And I hope that you do too. Trust the process, feel the pain and allow others to feel it with you today. Let others love you, even when you rather that they did. There's somebody that's grieving and it's running you ragged. You can barely get out of bed and do what you need to do, right? This, I'm assuming there's somebody listening that is going through that. I want today for you to turn your phone on charge it up, look at all your missed phone calls, text every phone, every person that has tried to reach you and reach out to you and let you know that they love you. I want you to text them back. Just got your message. Thank you. Love you too. That's it. Start there. Just start with that. Then tomorrow, because you nine times out of 10, if you're grieving, you're going to put the phone down and not look at it again after you do what I suggested. Now, tomorrow, I want you to pick one person, maybe three, maybe two, right? But pick one person. Call them. When you know they're not going to answer, you can leave a message. You see where I'm going with this? Call them when you can just leave a message and you know they're not going to pick up if they're at work, right? Call them and say, hey, and I, this is what I would say. Hey, this is Mighty Stream. I know I kind of been off the radar dealing with this loss. Um, I just wanted to reach out to you and let you know that I really appreciate your love and concern. I hope to talk to you soon. Have a good day. Thanks for thinking about me. Or, hi, this is Mighty Stream. Hey, I know you know I'm dealing with this loss. Uh, I thank you for pre reaching out. I'm just really not up to talking to a lot of people right now. But I just want to let you know that I love you too. And thank you. I appreciate it so much. Get off the phone. If they do answer, because they're probably waiting to see if you're going to respond to their messages. <laughs> and they might, you know, run to the bathroom and answer the phone. If they do answer, hey. Are you all right? Well, you know, I'm really going through it right now, but I respect you so much. I just really want to reach out to you and tell you thank you. Thank you so much for praying for me and thinking about me. I love you. Do you need anything? You know, I can't really think of a lot that I need right now. Um, prayer. 
I just want you to know I appreciate you, okay? I got to go. And get off the phone. It doesn't have to be long and drawn out. It doesn't. But letting love in is going to literally transform how you go through this loss. It did for me. My name is Mighty Stream. I've enjoyed talking to you today. I hope that today you will let love in. Have a beautiful day on purpose.